Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Julio Torado. I'm the director of internal audit at Spirit Bank. And to my right, we have... Pedro Serrano. Um, I am the chief information security officer at GRDA, also the ISSA president here in Oklahoma. Principle number three, uh, it's a different one. We want to take a different perspective. We want to talk about comfort in chaos. Um, so Julio, tell me how do we bring this into, mm. into the principle number three? So let's define that principle. Okay. So comfort and chaos in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu involves by necessity a constant exposure to uncomfortable situations. One, don't realize, one doesn't realize until you're in that situation, but uncomfortable situations, potentially chaotic situations, but, but being continuously exposed to, to chaos, to discomfort, uh, helps us jujitsu practitioners physically and emotionally prepare. So in, in when you uh, go to your academy, you, you, you learn techniques, and then in the next phase, you actually implement the techniques in a sparring session called rolling. So uh, you will fail, you will be in a chaos, you will have a bigger person on top of you, you will have... You, will you be, can't take shortcuts. You, no shortcuts, no shortcuts at all, you will be submitted. There'll be lots of chaos and all sorts of variety, um, and that's part of the process, you guys. And if you take a look at this picture here, uh, at the very top is a uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Professor Omar French, in the mount position, that his poor training partner at the bottom, that's a tough spot. That is a very uncomfortable situation to be in, especially when you have an expert on top of you with obviously a dominant situation. So this is life, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're dealing with a lot of issues. There's a lot of chaos, Pedro. It's very stressful. There is. Uh, so we have to some, somehow, we have to somehow find a way to gain comfort and chaos so we can help solve our problems. So let me tell you, let me tell you folks a scenario of chaotic environment and how really this paints a picture. Um, CEO of Medify, a medical device mm. supply and repair company, right? Demanded that the CISO look the other way. Ugh. That's not good, Pedro. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, about certain security requirements due to product demands, budget limitations and time constraints. Why? We're in the middle of a pandemic. The business has a lot of, been into a lot of financial pressure because, you know, before the pandemic, we couldn't sell medical equipment, and now we're selling everything that we have under the roof. But guess what? This, the, the CISO, a proud CISSP, recognizes that this is an ethical dilemma. Yeah. Uh, and the only uh, security professional in the company uh, that exists. So he's in a quandrum. No pressure. The CEO literally wants him to look the other way so that they can sell more devices without a security check, without making sure that the devices are, are perhaps configured correctly. From the security expected uh, perspective, um, this is weird, because he's being told, dude, look the other way, go away, we're just going to manufacture these machines X, Y, Z, and we're going to push them out. And I'm going to go, but I haven't been able to validate them. I haven't been able to check the configuration. I don't know if the mm. firm one is corroded or not. It doesn't matter. We're putting them in and I'm sending them out. Your thoughts? I hate to be you, Pedro. Oh. I hate to be, that's a tough one. So, <clears throat> in the first principle, this is, this is a common theme in these, in these discussions and probably everything else you can imagine is communication. Mm. Because one of, the, one of the things that you have to assume from our discussions, uh, so from the scenario so far, is that we, weren't in, uh, we didn't have a good relationship because I didn't find out about this until he read the darn scenario. Correct. Right? I'm Correct. totally out of the loop. Correct. There's a huge, so, so ought to be out of the loop of about something so major, it isn't good, right? Uh, so I need to be sure that I build that trust with you so that uh, you can feel comfortable sharing with me some red flags. Because I, I want it's important that we, uh, in the audit space, learn about these red flags as soon as possible. So we can try to do what we can to contribute. Uh, so priority for me is to be able to build that relationship with you early on, because then we'll be able to talk about the uncomfortable things that may come our way. 
right? This is a pretty chaotic situation. It's, it's, a, it's a probably, I defer to counsel for legal conclusions, but I'm pretty sure this is uh, a liability-inducing situation. In a, so, in, a, in a very costly and monetary issue. Yeah. Remember, yeah, I'm yeah. selling product left and right. A lot of pressure. You're feeling a lot of pressure. And in any, any, any fraud case, anybody studies, you'll find that there's a ton of financial pressure, right? right? Without exception. So if you and I have a good relationship initially, being able to come to each other from time to time about these mm. uncomfortable issues, red flags, this preps our minds to deal with that discomfort when it actually arises, when it actually materializes, for that chaotic situation for us to tackle. So that, that's one thing we can probably work on. Another thing that I want to emphasize is, is so internal audit, we, uh, one of the things that's very cool about this profession is that we are the beacon of integrity for an organization. You know, we're all about doing the right thing, being ethical, we promote it in a lot of what we do. And so one of the things that we do is, is evaluate controls in the enterprise pertaining to ethics and fraud. So for example, we don't have, in this scenario, we don't have a, a, an ethics hotline. Ooh. So you are probably concerned about raising issues about this mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. people will know you did, Correct. and that could affect your job, That's right? Correct. Nothing crazy about that. There may be other people that have picked up on these red flags that also feel the same pressure. So I, as the internal auditor, I can make sure through my, my assurance function, through mm -hmm. audit recommendations, through discussions with the audit committee, members of management, because obviously politics is a, Correct. Is a, Correct. Is a real deal. You know, it's not theory. Um, it, and on my end, I could do everything I can so that at some point we have an established ethics hotline, preferably third party, so it's fully anonymous, so that you can be empowered to raise your hand oh, yeah. and do something about these issues because these products can, can literally fix lives. We're talking about- At the about end of the day, I didn't say anything. Somebody else anonymously brought, brought it up instead of me being ah. on, the, on the hot seat. So what you're telling me is, first of all, have a relationship so that when the moment I heard about it, I could have, in confidence, come to you, right. private, and say, hey, I got an issue. Absolutely. Here's what's, what's going on. How can I leverage audit? Sure. How can I, how could you help me in here? So how could I leverage uh, audit in a situation like this? Well, the thing to keep in mind, you guys, is internal auditors, the scope is the whole company. By necessity, Pedro. So you, you have a lot of responsibility as a CISO. Right. Your responsibility is really broad, it's all encompassing. I've seen the CISO mind man, they are, they are horrendous how, how wide they are. Uh, internal audit is comparable in their broadness in that we, we have to also care about lots of other things, financial reporting and uh, other regulatory compliance and lots mm -hmm. of other things. By necessity, we have to build relationships with people across the whole enterprise. By necessity and design, we have to build good relations with the audit committee, i.e. independent members of the board. So my point is, huh. I know influencers, I know decision makers, and part of my job isn't just to test controls, it's also to influence minds. So auditors, we shouldn't just be detail-oriented people, we should be salespeople and selling ideas and selling confidence. So that's, that would be my commitment to you. If you tell me I have a problem, this is a serious issue, I'm not really sure what I can do about it, I will do everything within my power to raise awareness of the issue in a reasonable way so that we can address the issue, solve the problems, okay. and, and the best, as best we can, because this is a tough situation. This is absolutely tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you read cases that involve um, any, any kind of fraud in the past, had internal audit have the, the ability to, to be able to address the issue early on, it could have helped make, it, make a big difference. Interesting. I, I, liked, I like the idea of engaging early in the game yeah. and using the leverage of audit because you could have worked the problem on a different avenue while I was trying to deal with the day-to-day -day business um, and sort of save me some face uh, so that I could at least be two people that are not in favor sure. of this, right? It was just not the CISO that is, you know, hide my saying, oh, this is a security problem, let's not do this. Mm -hmm. You could have said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. This is what we should be doing. And the issues you mentioned, these are our controls. We're lacking controls for safety. We're lacking controls for liability right. or product. Right. And I'm all about the controls. So if we could bring it back to the principle, uh, obviously comfort, uh, comfort in, in chaos, but how do we prepare? How do we embrace? How do we, how do we share this? Um, because I, I, I got a feeling that this, this is as chaotic as yeah. it could get. Yeah, this is a bad day. Bad day. Um, so we mentioned in the, uh, somewhere in the middle of this, this, this piece of the talk 
the, the communication bit. Yes. So by, em, by embracing each other, initially with, our, uh, with, with open communication, trusting relationship, I can share with you concerns, you can share with me concerns. And we can talk about potential chaotic things before they become chaotic, so we can prep our minds to, to be ready to you take know, the action. That, that reminds be me preemptive. That, that perhaps we should have an NDA between the audit and security piece, uh, office, right? Mm. And say, whatever you and I discuss, it's private, and it doesn't leave our office. Well, we have to, that's gonna be a necessary element, I, I think, just, just to trust each other, right? I, mean, I know you use NDA, we can't legally do that, but, but trust each other to be open. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's absolutely. a thought process. I mean, absolutely, something guys. that says, whatever I tell you, yeah, yeah. you tell me, gotta stay here. Now, how do we tackle that? The one thing I wanna emphasize, because we're keeping it real, this is not just about friendly discussions, is if I am aware of a fraud, I am ethically bound not to keep it a secret. That's correct. You know, That's correct. Uh, I have to be able to do the right Just thing. It's like if play, I find something in play. security that puts us at yeah, risk, right. I have to say, uh-uh, stop, we gotta do this. I cannot promise you anonymity with 100% certainty if you bring a fraud to me, that, that's just not, I can't, I cannot give you that guarantee. Right. Um, but to your point though, Pedro, you, you know, your use of the NDA, uh, this is about being able to trust each other, mm -hmm. about real world issues. Mm -hmm. So I wanna share things with you, you sh I know you wanna share things with me, Great. but at, at, the end, at the end of the day, I mentioned earlier, we're striving for, for the same end goal. You want our companies to be successful. We want it to be managed safely, yes. soundly. We want things yes. to be really predictable. Yes. And, and the issues that are causing you heartburn, they pertain to ethics and internal control. Correct. That's my domain. I'm all about the ethics and internal control. Correct. Correct. So how do, we, how do we share this? How do we make this, this particular situation better? Um, what's the end result here? Uh, and, and, uh, and how do we get out of this? Is, is there a way out? After it happened? After it happened. Ooh, that's a tough one, interesting. Well, I tell you what, perhaps that would be great if you can put us some questions for us uh, so we can establish a discussion. Because how funny, we don't have all the answers in this. Uh, because as you have seen, we have this quandrum of, wow, from the audit perspective and from the security perspective, I don't know how do we get out. Ethically, I have to do the best. Ethically, you have to do the best. So do we both lose our jobs together? As a team though. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> right? But how fun that we were able to talk about principle number three, right? And have comfort in chaos. Uh, and folks, it's funny, but with this, uh, we, we wrap up our, our talk. I hope you have enjoyed it. I know, I know you have some last words here, will you? Thank you, sir, for being part of the process. Uh, Pedro is amazing what he does. It's, he's always a great leader in the industry, so thank, thank you so thank, much, sir. Thank you for being uh, here. Thank you to our, our Jiu-Jitsu Academies, Professor Peter Wilhelm, yes. uh, Trident Fight Center and Broken Arrow, Professor Omar French with uh, French Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in That's Bixby right. in Oklahoma. We appreciate your support. And I hope this is helpful to you guys. Uh, you know, to, to his question earlier about uh, a really tough question, what do we do after the fact? There's, there isn't always an easy answer. I know we had a lot of answers that seem mm -hmm. easy and practical, but, but at the end of the day, we have to be able to work early, build these relationships so we can tackle the challenges that we're not gonna predict. Without we, the relationship, we couldn't even have the conversation. Yeah, nobody expected the COVID, COVID-19, right? And so who knows what else is gonna come our way, so by, by having, uh, developing, providing effort up front to build the relationship, by talking about issues early on, by trusting each other, by uh, um, being comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. having these tough discussions, mm -hmm. we don't wanna wait until it happens, to talk about it before it happens, i.e. risk assessments, by addressing issues that, that can maybe chaotic early on, we're gonna be better prepared. So, thank you all so much for, for being part of this process. Thank we appreciate you. you.